Welcome to NCIX Tech Tips. Today's episode is going to be a couple of different things. First of all, we're going to be doing a Crossfire X upgrade guide. So we're going to be taking this computer that's behind me. I'm actually going to move out of the way so you can see it. This computer that's behind me, that's our ultimate AMD machine with a six core processor. That's an 1100T Turbo Black Edition processor. We have a 50, uh, rather a 59, a 6970 graphics card. We've got four gigs of Corsair Dominator GT memory with their Dominator Airflow fan. This is all liquid cooled in the Corsair Graphite 600T case, and it's powered by an AX850 power supply. This is all on a Crosshair 4 Formula motherboard, and we are going to be showing you guys how to take your already Leet Madness gaming machine and make it even faster by adding an additional graphics card. It's actually really simple. But before we get started, we're going to have a look at a game that I really like. This is Battlefield Bad Company 2. It's a quite a demanding game. So we're going to go ahead and find some settings and we're going to show you how much of a performance increase you can get on an already tricked out machine by upgrading to an additional graphics card. So we're going to run it at pretty much full detail settings. So 8x anti-aliasing, 16x AF, everything else on high and let's get started, shall we? Now it actually is going to take me a minute or so to get to the point where I have my pre-recorded run through so I can take a fraps reading. So give me just a moment and I'll get up to that town encounter. By the way, I just want to take a moment to tell you guys that we are trying out the SP2500 speakers from Corsair for the first time in this episode of NCIX Tech Tips. So uh, here, hopefully, okay, yeah, the camera did focus. So here I am at my uh, benchmark run spot. So I'm gonna go ahead and go through this with a single 6970. So you can see up here in the top right corner, I'm only running at about 27 frames per second. So when I actually max everything out in this game with triple HD resolution, a single 6970 starts to struggle a little bit because we don't even have anything going on right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and start my recording. And we won't be able to check frame rate anymore when that's on. You nailed it. But I'm going to play the game for about two minutes, get some numbers for you guys, and then I will be back to tell you how to upgrade to Crossfire and what kind of a performance improvement we see. Okay, so up until about this point in my sequence, the average frame rate was 24.7 FPS. So normally I do a few runs and take the average in order to ensure that I'm getting the most accurate possible numbers. But uh, since we're a little bit time constrained here and we just want general improvement, we're gonna go ahead and throw in our other video card and do another run to see how much of a performance improvement we're able to get by doubling our graphics horsepower. And now I'm dead. So the first step when you want to upgrade to Crossfire is to determine a need. So in this case, the game I play is Battlefield Bad Company 2. My average frame rate is around 25 FPS, which I would consider... Honestly, it wasn't really playable. It was very difficult for me to get headshots. It was very difficult for me to track enemies moving across the screen. I found that at triple HD resolution, at completely maxed out details, the 6970 was not quite able to keep up. So we have established, we have a need for more graphics horsepower. Okay, so that's step number one. Step number two is to make sure that you have all of the right parts. Now, when you're determining a compatible graphics card, you can check out the SLI and Crossfire FAQ that I did on my NCIX Tech Tips channel. But here's, in a nutshell, make sure it's the same graphics card. The manufacturer can be XFX and Power Color, Vision Tech, doesn't matter. You can mix and match all that stuff, but it has to be the same GPU. So in this case, we have two 6970s. Next, you're gonna need a Crossfire compatible motherboard. All AMD dual graphics motherboards, that is a 790GX, 890GX, 890FX, all of those chipsets are Crossfire ready. So if you have two 16X slots, you're ready to go. You will also need a Crossfire bridge as well as a compatible power supply. So we have an AX850 power supply. This thing is more than capable of anything that we're gonna be throwing at it with a system like this. So once we've gone through our checklist, we have our graphics card on hand, we can go ahead and shut down the system and 
This is running off an SSD, so it should shut down pretty quick. You might actually be able to do this real time. And what we need to do from there is determine which slots run at full 16x bandwidth to give us the most bandwidth to our graphics cards possible. So we're going to go ahead and turn off the power supply at the back, ground ourselves out on the power supply before we start working. In this case, in the Crosshair 4 formula, the one we want to use is this one right here. So I'm going to go ahead and take out the PCI covers that are in my case in order to install my graphics card. There we go. Those are out. Then all I need to do is, now I already have the cables routed for dual graphics cards because I knew I was going to be doing this. Now all I have to do is take my graphics card, position it correctly over the slot, make sure that I'm not putting any unnecessary pressure on the motherboard, just making sure that it's sliding right in quite easily. Then I plug in my power connectors. So in this case, I have one 8-pin and one 6-pin power connector for a 6970. So go ahead and put that in there. Put in the additional one. Like I said, I've already done the cable management, so I don't have to worry too much about how to route those. All right, once those are in, then all I need to do is position the card correctly, plug in the two, or rather plug in, screw in the two screws to make sure that it's being held in place. Don't want it to wiggle around if I'm moving my system or transporting it for whatever reason. It gets knocked over by the cat or whatever happens. Then I install a Crossfire bridge. Please note you only need one Crossfire bridge for two-way Crossfire X. Turn my power supply back on, press the power button, and that was it. That was my Crossfire upgrade. I'll show you guys the software component in just a moment. All right, guys, so I've changed my graphics card configuration, so it looks like my iFinity setup sort of disappeared. That's okay. I'll show you guys how to configure that. So we go into the Catalyst Control Center, and I'm going to go ahead and pull this over to the middle so I can see what I'm doing. We go into graphics. The first thing we're going to do is go down to Crossfire X, and it's that easy. You click Apply. You check the box, and you click Apply, and then you have Enabled Crossfire. Okay. Wait. Okay, yeah, there we go. Whoops, I clicked OK, so I closed Catalyst Control Center. Okay, so we can go in and check. We can go into Crossfire X. Yes, it is enabled now. It's not giving me any error messages, so it's working. So now what we do is we go into Desktops and Displays. We create a group. Okay, yes, they belong to Extended Desktops. That's just fine. It'll pop up a message in just a moment, which will give me a couple different options for how to create my display group. We're going to do three times one and click accept. Is the display alignment arrangement correct? Uh, not quite. Okay, give me a minute to figure this out. Be back in a moment. Sorry about that, guys. The solution was to enable iFinity and set everything up the way we want. So we've got our displays grouped here. Uh, we've done our bezel compensation. So you can see we're running a resolution of 5904 by 1080. Okay, and then once that's done, then you go in and configure Crossfire X rather than configuring Crossfire and then configuring iFinity. So we did get that sorted out. We're gonna have some gaming results for you in just a moment. And I think you will be pleased with the results. All right, so you can clearly see right off the bat that our frame rates are higher than they were with a single card with our dual card configuration. So I'm going to go ahead and play through my time demo here and I'll let you guys know how much faster it runs with Crossfire X. All right, so we saw an average of 37.3 frames per second. So that is a 50% improvement over the single card configuration with dual cards. Now, that's not really a best case scenario, but in some games you get great scaling, in other games you don't get as good scaling. And in this case, it really took us from that point where it was unplayable up to the point where it is smoothly playable. I died, that was entirely my fault. I forgot what my melee key, key was bound to. But thank you for checking out this episode of NCIX Tech Tips on how to upgrade your PC with a Crossfire configuration, as well as what kind of a performance improvement we saw at massive resolution in Battlefield Bad Company 2.